We welcome you all, wherever you are, to this online celebration of St. Ignatius Loyola, whose feast day is celebrated today, 31st July. My name is Cynthia Ndala. St. Ignatius Loyola was a courtier, a soldier, a pilgrim, and the founder of a religious order, the Society of Jesus, or as they are often called, the Jesuits. Above all, he was a passionate man who after his own conversion, wanted to do one thing and one thing only, to serve God as wholeheartedly as he could. Today we celebrate his life and witness. We thank God for the wonderful gift that he left the whole church, his gift of discernment, which he discovered in his own conversion. Let us begin our celebration with a prayer by Father Russell Pollitt. Friends, let's pray. Lord our God, on this day when we celebrate St. Ignatius Loyola, we thank you for the gift that he was to the whole Christian church. We thank you that he teaches us how to give greater glory to God. We thank you for the discernment of spirits which he gives us so that we may come to see and know how you are present and working in our own lives and complex world. And so today we give you grateful thanks and ask that you look upon us and bestow on us the gifts of Ignatius himself. In the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen.
the life and work of St. Ignatius continues to have an impact on us today. Many people have discovered through the spiritual exercises how God is calling them to conversion and new life in Christ. Johan Geyser says that the spiritual exercises were like spiritual training for him. He tells us that they were the most formative experience of his life in which he was introduced to a loving God. I was strangely drawn towards the idea of spiritual exercises when I first read about it years ago. And perhaps it's because I'm an athlete and I'm convinced that you'll never grow, reach your potential, become all that you can be without training. Not only physically, intellectually, socially, in skills, doing your work, in every way. Why not in our relationship with God? So I decided to do the exercises of Ignatius. And it was one of the most forming experiences in my life. Well, my idea of God, first of all, changed. I was introduced to a loving God. Uh, in the beginning of the exercises, you start with the exercise that Ignatius calls the principle and foundation. And you're drawn into this world where you have this image of a loving God who created you and gives you everything that you need to live your life. And God sustains everything and He is in everything. What an adventure to discover and to find God in everything. And of course, if your view of God changes, your view of yourself changes. I discovered I'm a loved sinner. Suddenly, I felt the tension in my life of being a saint, of being a sinner, disappear. And it's a wonderful rest to know that I'm okay with God and God's okay with me. And then this big invitation to pay attention to your experience was something new to me. Uh, Victor, of St. Hugo said that there are three books that we should read in life. The book of scripture, the book of creation, and then the book of your experience. Because God will come to you disguised in your experience. And I've discovered that I'm, I was into science and I was into studying the Bible, but pay no attention to my experience. And what a discovery that God can be in your emotions, is working in your life, in your thoughts, in everything happening to you. And the examen, a way of praying, where Ignatius invites you to reflect on your day and on your experiences to discover the movements of the Spirit. It was as if my whole insight was ignited doing the exercises. All the spiritual Senses become alive of imagination, of memory, not only the reason. And then, of course, my view of life changed. I heard the invitation of Christ to join him on the mission field in what he's busy doing in this world. And I would say it changed my life in every way. I'm a teacher, and my main source of inspiration comes through prayer with Scripture, the way that Ignatius told me. So I'm very thankful for the exercises, the conversion it brought, brought about and still is bringing about in my life. Veronica Mtembu says that Ignatian spirituality has helped her to know that God loves her deeply and can be encountered in all around her. Hi, everyone. My name is Veronica. So, how Ignatius spirituality influenced my life? Firstly, as a young adult, Ignatius spirituality reminds me that God loved me deeply and encountered me in everything around me. But also, 
move me towards growth even if I think he is distant. So Ignatius spirituality influenced me in living a life with God and others. A desire to find the voice of God in and through the ordinary event of the day. Pilani Masikane was skeptical of doing the spiritual exercises in a group format, but after the experience found it profound. He really appreciated the gift of indifference, which continues to help him in his daily life. Hello, my name is Pilani Masikane, and I am a volunteer at the Jesuit Institute in South Africa. Today, I would like to share my experience in the spiritual exercises which I received between 2016 and 2017. I was offered the spiritual exercises in daily life and in group format, all of which took a little bit less than a year and a half to complete. Overall, I must say that the experience for me was quite profound, even though initially I was quite skeptical about the group format. What really helped, though, was the fact that the individuals that had chosen to undertake the same journey were people with whom I was already familiar. Also, our collective spiritual maturity meant that we really understood the requirements around confidentiality and, moreover, the importance of holding each other in prayer as we recounted our journeys and experiences, particularly when focus shifted from one individual to another. The daily life format really enabled me to live the spiritual exercises and due to that I think the behavioral impact was bigger and lasted much longer than what I imagine would have been the case had I undertaken them in the traditional 30-day format. I say that it was a lived experience because being in prayer every day meant that I also had the chance to contemplate my entire daily life experiences around the exercises. I would say that the biggest help that I received for my life in the spiritual exercises was to love God and his creation unconditionally. Therefore, being able to use my talents to show the love of God in my own life and in the lives of everyone I encountered. However, to get me to that point, I really had had to deal with my view on how God was there to serve me as any loving father would. However, for me, God was available on demand with no response or initiation required on my part, almost like he was being tested every day in my life. No doubt that this view was flawed and the resultant distress when God failed to show up was unimaginable. It is in the spiritual exercises that I appreciated the gift of indifference. You see, the personal freedom to grow my relationship with God without attaching special conditions or constant tests for God to prove himself was the liberation that I needed to fully appreciate my gifts and to use them daily to serve God and to continue to contemplate the direction of my life. This has been the single most important and biggest gift I gained from the spiritual exercises. In everyday challenges, be it spiritual or just life in general, my outlook has shifted from being anxious about whether God will deliver me this time around to rather being hopeful that my contemplated choice and response to the challenges will lead me to what God really desires for me. Despite my initial misgivings, the spiritual exercises have been and continue to be a rewarding experience in my life. Gilbert Banda, a Jesuit from Zimbabwe, says that his experience of the spiritual exercises left him with a great desire to serve others, to go to the frontiers where others did not want to go. My name is Father Gilbert Fungai Banda. I'm a Catholic priest within the order of the Society of Jesus, also known as the Jesuits. With where I am in my life as a Jesuit, I've done the spiritual exercises twice, and each of these experiences 
are unique in their own way. You know, when I did the spiritual exercises for the first time, you know, before going into, with, into the experience, I was so anxious. I was wondering, how am I going to pray? I'm so unworthy. And my sinfulness bogged me down. I felt that prayer is for perfect people. Prayer is for gifted people. Prayer is for people who really uh, don't spend time sinning, actually. And I felt that I'm a mistake. And I thought that within the first, or first day or the second, you know, my spiritual guide or my spiritual director was going to realize that I'm a fake and he was going to kick me out of the spiritual center, you know. But that wasn't the case. I came to realize that actually it's the opposite. God loves me even with my sinfulness. God knows that I'm a sinner. And what God is bothered with is how I look at myself, how I loathe myself, how I despise myself. Because within the first week of the spiritual exercises, I came to look at God looking at me. And God looking at me with a graceful countenance. I saw a God who knows fully well that I'm a sinner, and yet he loves me. He has called me to serve him. For me, that was liberating. It actually helped me to rise above things that were pulling me down. It gave me a lot of confidence. It actually gave me the desire to follow Christ. And the way St. Ignatius has designed the spiritual exercises, you know, I come to realize that each week actually prepares you for, for the next step. And as I went through each week or each day, I actually went with great trust, knowing that God loves me, knowing that all I have to do is to show up. And I did exactly that. God was always showing up in each and every moment. And within my second experience of the spiritual exercises, I actually uh, came to realize that um, even though I had spent so much time as a Jesuit, there were a number of things actually which had led me to veer off from my path. Ambition had proved probed into my life in a very unhealthy way. I'd, I'd become a little bit selfish, a little bit resentful. And God showed me those things in a very gentle way. Actually, what happened for me, if I can put it in imagery form, I felt like God was showing me his goodness next to my ambition, next to, to all those things I was craving for. And it made those things look ugly. Because God, in essence, is beautiful. Or I may say God is the essence of beauty. It made me choose God who is beauty. And it made me loathe those things. And this experience has been uh, a joyful experience, which actually has propelled me into another dimension of wanting to serve people selflessly of wanting to save people for no money, of wanting to go to the frontiers where no one wants to go, of wanting, you know, to express my gratitude by serving others. Today, we thank God for St. Ignatius and how his gift of the spiritual exercises continues to draw men and women, young and old, into conversion so that they experience a deeper friendship with Jesus. Let us listen to God's word. Anne-Marie Pauline Campbell reads for us from the Gospel of John. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, 
which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. We invite you to spend a few moments reflecting on God's word. Our reflection today will be given by a special guest, the General of the Society of Jesus, Father Arturo Sosa. We thank Father Sosa for agreeing to share a few thoughts with us on St. Ignatius and conversion. Dear friends in the Lord, members and associates of the Jesuit Institute South Africa, Catholic and ecumenical colleagues and collaborators in Christ's mission, I would like to wish you a happy feast of our founder, St. Ignatius, and this challenging time in our life. I would like in particular to share with you some thoughts on the theme of conversion as the whole society prepares to celebrate an Ignatian year beginning in May 2021. It all started with Ignatius' own conversion. Without that, none of the rest. The spiritual exercises, the spiritual conversations, the gathering of the companions, the discernment that led to the Society of Jesus, and the ongoing discernment that still lead us to all that we do for God's greater glory will have happened. Now to the nature of Ignatius' conversion. While some people experience conversion to Christ as a dramatic change from unbelief to faith, from sin to an experience of grace that makes them strive for goodness, Ignatius' conversion was slightly different. He was already a Christian believer, by the standards of his time, a reasonable good man too. What happened in this case, and I suspect in many of our cases too, was that God's grace made a good man better. We all need ongoing conversion in our life, a metanoia, a change of heart. We need to recognize and welcome the fact that we are always being called to conversion, not in the sense that we second guess ourselves with guilt, but with a genuine but generous self-critical desire to serve God better, to become better people. We should not be afraid of such criticism insofar that it helps us do better. Imagine new things by which we can truly serve the images. But we must always strive against the temptation to scrupulosity of the kind of self-hating, undervaluing of what we do that can paralyze our work and even lead us to despair. It was Ignatius' ongoing conversion linked to the desire to discern God's will that drove him not only to found the Society of Jesus, but to consider how he might serve the Lord better, the knowledge that we are sinners loved by God, encourage us to strive beyond what is simply required for us, to acknowledge with gratitude God's love for us. Conversion also entails rethinking how we do things. So today, we are invited to always be open to ongoing conversion. 
at this time in particular, where so much of what we have taken for granted in our life and ministries is no longer possible, and in some cases dangerous, we need to be discerning how we can better serve the Lord anew. We are being invited to be creative, to live a creativity born out of our conversion, our change of heart. This will full of our striving to serve the Lord and our brothers and sisters better. May the example of Ignatius' conversion reknit in you all the spirit of discernment and seal for mission that is the healthiest, most creative fruit of ongoing personal conversion. May God bless you today and as you travel the road of conversion. We invite you to join us in prayers of intercession now as we pray for the Society of Jesus, the Church, and our world. Gracious God, we thank you for St. Ignatius and his profound experience of conversion and for the spiritual exercises through which so many over the past 500 years have experienced life-transforming grace. Gracious God, in this time of pandemic, convert our despair to hope, our fear to love, our frustration to doing that which we can with faithfulness and trust. May we, whose lives have been touched by the lives of St. Ignatius of Loyola, continue to seek to find you in the challenging reality of our daily lives. Gracious God, as we come to understand more the interconnectedness of all of creation, may we shift from a mindset of exploitation to one of care for all creatures and for the earth. May we know ourselves as part of your creation. Gracious God, our world is groaning in the anguish of the many hurts we inflict on each other. May we leaven the dough, contributing through our daily actions to our becoming a church and a society in which every person is treated with dignity, love and respect. Gracious God, may each of us come to know and live our own particular call in the world. May we be converted from self-interest to a wholehearted offering of ourselves and your gifts to us for the service of others. We join all our prayers together with the prayer of our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We now ask the Lord to bless us on this Feast of St. Ignatius and help us through our own journey of conversion as we find God in all things. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's now go in peace. Mm -hmm.